So, unless you're IGN, you've probably grown tired of all the big, high-profile movies coming out and proving to be disappointments time and time again. That's why when I saw the trailer for the 2022 movie Fall, I thought this looks kind of interesting. A film taking place primarily in the same location, a concept that allows for a number of creative ideas, it definitely got my attention. The thing is, even though the movie gave us exactly what it promised, I don't think they knew what to do with it. Nor do they have any concept of logic. Despite being well received, it seems like that had something to do with what I just said about the idea being unique. I'm not saying it's void of any entertainment, but it's kind of like you get to a certain point in the movie, and then you question over and over again, what the fuck are they talking about? The premise of the movie, simply put, is two individuals climb a tower, one depressed, one stupid. They get stuck on said tower, because again, the blonde is stupid. And the rest is a bunch of nonsense that doesn't make any sense until they get to the inevitable outcome that isn't that hard to see coming. The reason I'm going into so much detail right now is because there is not much else to say. There's some good stuff to mention too, but overall it's a film that had me real excited, received acclaim due to its premise, and that's kind of it. So with nothing to really say, let's analyze Fall and see if there is anything else to it. The movie opens, as you'd expect, with some rock climbing. And our two leads, Becky Connor and notable free climber Shiloh Hunter, along with Becky's husband, Dan. Cavalier says loose rock around the elbow. Don't worry about your ropes, bitches. I'm fine. She's kind of on the annoying side, but that's okay. It's not like she'll actively cause the disaster that'll take place later in the movie. Dan winds up falling, but fear not, they have a plan. Man, the plan failed. It's kind of like another notable movie that opens with a rock climbing fatality. Only then, I oddly enough didn't see it coming. Not that it can be helped, I mean, we know who's going to be in most of the movie, but yeah, it's not that shocking. What is shocking is the way they have her acting after the fact, avoiding all the cliché shit and doing something different. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you didn't really believe that, did you? No, it's the same cliché shit. Like drinking heavily, listening to his phone message on repeat, and treating her dad like garbage. Let me give you a ride home. I'd rather walk. Because even though he's only in two scenes, we just couldn't go on without this conflict. Yeah, it's partly due to him saying that Dan wasn't that great, but I think we know there's a reason for that. Do you know what I need, Dad? I need you to leave me alone. I am gonna beat the fuck, fucking fuckity fuck out of you. Dan's phone number then gets disconnected, causing her to be even more depressed. And did I mention it's been a year? Yeah, a year. And I guess she was serious about not wanting to move on. Her annoying friend Hunter shows up and says, hey, since a full year of depression is clearly not good for mental health, let's climb a 2,000 foot high tower and scatter Dan's ashes off the end. I'm not trying to be technical, but they could have thought of a better excuse to get them on top of that tower, because this is not a good idea. It's like, no, I can't do it, I'm sorry. Hey, you're gonna be okay. Well, yeah, she has to decline first, because otherwise the cliche bits wouldn't be complete. Obviously. Pardon, princess? What's wrong? Well, it's a little humid outside. She agrees to do it, and it only took about 10 minutes to get the plot moving. That's one positive, I guess. But yeah, depression over. A full year of anguish gone. 
Just like that. Who is it? Nobody. Just give me your hands up, boyfriend. Nothing. Kind of reminds me of someone I used to know who died a terrible death. We learn that Hunter is a YouTuber, which I guess is important so they can have conversations like this. I'm just saying, if you're gonna be a YouTuber, why not be yourself? You are awesome. Natural born clickbait. And upon establishing that the tower has a light on top, we're shown a handy method of charging a phone by taking the light out and lining up the prongs. I wonder if that's gonna mean something later. You probably should have separated these scenes if you think that's bad foreshadowing, just look at this. Are you live streaming? No, dude. Shoot now, post later. Oh, good. I don't want to be in it. Okay, obviously we know something's gonna go wrong, and if they'd been live streaming, inevitably somebody would have come looking, but couldn't you have at least given them some kind of reason? Because, spoiler, the idea of phones not working that high up is going to be a thing. So, that could have been the reason. Then again, the fact that they didn't tell anybody what they're doing is also kind of stupid. So, maybe I'm asking too much. Isn't that a bit obvious? They've also brought no food, because fuck common sense, but she does post a video of a half-dead animal, because I guess that's what her fans want to see. She then wants to back out, because she's afraid she might fall and die, but Hunter isn't having any of that. So shut your shit, and let's do this. <laughs> what did you just say? So shut your shit, and let's do this. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Doesn't make any sense. Also, the tower is kind of in bad shape, so that might be an issue, but let's be honest, she ain't taking over an answer. Even upon reaching the communications dish that isn't the easiest thing to get around, the show apparently must go on. Well, I actually really do hate you, Hunter. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the audience does too. It's relatable. It's a good thing. She then shakes the ladder. I don't fucking know why. It was already falling apart. This is completely unneeded, but I guess they just want us to hate her. That's fucking stupid! So they reach the top, fuck around with the drone for a bit, and finally scatter Dan's ashes. I'll admit, it's kind of a touching moment. It's not a standout, but it's... I don't know about you, but I really need to pee. I've needed to pee since we passed the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> ruined. Completely ruined. No coming back from this. How anybody thought that line was okay is beyond me. A year of being depressed, calling the guy's phone just to hear his voice, and that's the amount of respect you have? For those of you who think, well, you just don't like the movie because you've never lost somebody like that. Well, I sure as fuck know that I would not have said what she just said. So they finally climb back down, and thanks part to Hunter's hilarious gag of shaking the ladder, it breaks off. And it's a good scene too. I especially like how it takes a while for pieces of the ladder to hit the ground, showing off just how high they are. And it's got a lot of suspense. If it was happening for a reason other than her shaking the fucking ladder, we'd have a good scene. Just hide them. <laughs> I don't know what's so damn funny about this. You do realize the ladder's gone, right? Oh, you don't realize that, even though you were just on it when it fell. They've lost their bag too, containing the water and other supplies, but that's okay because obviously the ladder hitting the ground will surely attract some attention. I mean, it's not like they're one to two miles away from civilization. Like a mile? Maybe two-ish? Oh, well, she can still lie about it, I mean, that works too, and then proceed to joke about the situation the next day, because I guess this is funny. Come on, show us who you 
are. Show us Shiloh Hunter. Tell us why you vlog. You're a successful YouTuber, just leave it alone. And also, your current situation is real fucking bad. There's no time for this be yourself shit. They do eventually realize that help probably isn't coming, and instead devise a foolproof, can't possibly fail plan to get down. You see, even though they can't get a reception up there, they definitely could on the ground. So if they tie a rope to the phone and lower it down a fraction of their height, then it'll definitely get a signal. Is this a joke? This obviously fails, so she says, hey, what if we climb down the tiny piece of ladder we have left and hang out the end? That'll definitely be enough. Are you out of your fucking mind? This still fails because logic is a thing in this movie, even though common sense isn't. But luckily they have a new foolproof can't possibly fail plan to throw the phone down, but put it inside a shoe so it won't break. Uh, spoiler, this doesn't work. And also, how fucking stupid are these two idiots? I mean, fuck, why not just rely on the phone case to save it? Uh, stranded on top of a high tower and require assistance. You could do this by liking the video and hitting the subscribe button unless you like this movie or something. Oh shit, I forgot to hit send! Oh, fuck my life. She notices some writing on Hunter's leg, which will mean something later, but for now, there's people down there who don't notice them, but luckily they have a handy flare gun. They wait until night to use it, an actual smart decision, for once, but it turns out they're just a bunch of thieves who take their truck and never send help. But, on the bright side, we do find out what 143 means. Dan can never say the words, I love you. 143. 143. So, apparently, Hunter had an affair with Dan, and I'll give them some credit, this was kind of intelligently foreshadowed. But what doesn't make any sense about this is how she figured this out. See, Dan, the person she's so depressed about, so devastated over, never said, I love you. He'd say, one, four, three, which just so happens to be tattooed on Hunter's leg. So, why would you say that? I mean, why? Maybe I'm missing something, but there's just no sense to this. Also, Dan apparently started it, so Dad was right. Who would have seen that coming? Oh my goodness! Look at this! Hunter decides to make up for her wrongdoings by using the rope to climb down and get the bag. Besides, maybe you'll get lucky and I'll fall. Or not, because that's kind of an awful thing to say. I mean, you want her to feel guilty too? What happened to being sorry? It's not long enough though, so she must jump and use the handy selfie stick to retain the rope. That's amazing, that's some good MacGyver shit right there. <laughs> Have you ever seen MacGyver? Because if you're gonna compare him to Hunter, there's kind of an intelligence gap. There, you see that? MacGyver wouldn't have fallen. And if he had, he would have just combined the drone with the selfie stick to make it strong enough to hold a human body. I don't know how he'd do that, but he'd figure it out. Apparently, she landed on the bag, but her hands are too messed up to climb, so Becky must do it herself. They then attempt to use the drone to send a message, but damn the luck, the battery's dead meaning it's time to use the obvious trick that was mentioned earlier by climbing the tower, unscrewing the light, and charging it that way. Which is another suspenseful scene with the birds attacking and whatnot. But upon almost reaching the diner... They just really don't have the best look. Thing is, I'm pretty sure somebody would pick up the drone in the street and find the note, Eventually. 
But I'm guessing you probably didn't see this coming. Well, I'll admit, that was an okay twist. It may be the only good thing about the movie, but I'll give it credit as there is no moment between then and now that makes this impossible. Aside from the fact that I don't think this would be enough to make you hallucinate that badly, but it is what it is. After consuming a vulture, which is kind of funny because the movie's almost over, making it pointless, she descends to Hunter's location, a lot easier than she did, and uses her dead body to pad the shoe, ensuring that this time it won't break. It doesn't really stick it in there that deep, but <laughs> come on, this shit has to end somehow. The dish begins to give way, and... What? What the fuck is this? No. No. Not cool. Not fucking cool. You have no fucking idea how not fucking cool that shit is. No, I'm just kidding, she's fine. And was rescued off screen, even though that thing was about to break. And not a choice. But yeah, kind of a shitty ending. Life is fleeting. Life is short. Too short. So... You gotta use every- No, I don't think the movie warrants that, but that was Fall. And... It's no surprise people like it. On the base of it, it is a good idea, and if you don't think about it too much, you might be able to get some enjoyment out of it. The acting is well done, the characters are for the most part okay, and when stuff does happen, it leads to some pretty good scenes. As expected, the movie looks great and is filmed to great effect, but for a survival movie, there's just too much dumb shit going on. That being the nonsensical plans to get down, the quote-unquote love triangle plot that wasn't needed, and the fact that Hunter is a fucking idiot, who literally caused the whole thing to happen by bouncing on the ladder which is especially dumb because the whole thing was already falling apart. You didn't need that. I know it sounds odd to knock the movie for that alone, but I can't get into something when I'm spending half my time questioning what they're thinking. Good writing is, in my opinion, kind of important, and I just don't think this movie has that. The concept, the atmosphere, the acting is all great, but that still isn't enough when the events taking place are uncompelling. It's one of those flaws that doesn't get called out that much nowadays, and as a result, this movie is rather liked. And that's okay. There's nothing offensively bad, and it did provide some entertainment, but in the end, it's just not leaving an impact. I'm The Analyst, and remember kids, if you've had an affair with your best friend's husband or wife, maybe just admit to it instead of almost getting them killed on a deadly exposition. So, you've made it to the end. That's an impressive feat indeed. Since you managed that, I guess check out the gaming channel, in which I cover a variety of gaming topics, like analysis videos such as this one. If you're into that, then press the link in the description. It's that simple.